Good morning and welcome to the 26th meeting of the Rural Affairs and Islands Committee in 2024. Uh, before we begin, can I ask members to please ensure that all electronic devices are switched to silent. Uh, today we have received apologies from Ariane Burgess. Uh, our first item uh, on our agenda is to invite Tim Eagle, our newest committee member, to declare any relevant interests. Um, and in welcoming Tim, we also uh, say thank you to Rachel Hamilton for her contribution uh, to, the committee's, to the committee's work since the start of this parliamentary session. So, uh, Tim, any interest to declare? Uh, thank you, convener, and uh, great to be with you on this committee. Um, just to declare, all my registered interests obviously are online and available there. Uh, I am a small farmer. Um, I, I say small because I don't have much left, uh, but I do have sheep. I do have a wee bit of arable. I do claim single farm payment, and I do claim LFAS, uh, but I will make sure that's updated as regularly as I can. But um, please do go online if you want to see more. Well, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, our next item of business is to consider whether to take item 5 in private. Uh, item 5 is in consideration of a draft letter to the Scottish Government regarding our pre-budget scrutiny. Are we all agreed? agreed? Thank you. Our next item of business today is consideration of an affirmative SSI, the Free Range Egg Marketing Standards Amendment Scotland Regulations 2024. And I welcome to the meeting Jim Fairley, the Minister for Agriculture and Connectivity and officials from the Scottish Government. This morning we have Dar Darren uh, Cormack, Food and Drink uh, Livestock Product Products Policy Manager, uh, and Judith Brown, Solicitor. And I invite the Minister to make an opening statement. Uh, thank you very much, convener. I'd also like to welcome Tim to the committee and very much look forward to working with him over the, the next uh, period of time. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to speak about the Free Range Egg Marketing Standards Amendment Scotland Regulations 2024. Now, this draft instrument amends assimilated regulation EU number 589-2008 on the marketing standards for eggs, the Egg Marketing Standards Regulation, with regard to the 16-week derogation period that is allowed in the event of a housing order being implemented. The Egg Marketing Standards Regulation requires boxes of Class A eggs to be marked with their farming method. For the farming method free range, poultry must have continuous daytime access to open-air runs. At present, the Egg Market and Standards Regulation allow a derogation for eggs to be marketed as free range for only the first 16 weeks of any housing order that is introduced. Following that, the eggs must then be labelled as barn eggs. This instrument will remove that 16-week limit. Last year, the EU changed their legislation to remove the 16-week limit on the derogation period, as we are proposing here, so that eggs could continue to be marketed as free-range, regardless of how long hens had been housed under temporary housing restrictions. This followed a period of consultation. Outbreaks of avian flu in recent years have unfortunately required housing orders to put in place in the UK, and in 2021-22, this covered the whole of the UK and exceeded the 16-week derogation period by six weeks to a total of 22 weeks. In 2022 and 23, England, Wales and Northern Ireland put in place a housing order which also exceeded the 16-week derogation by seven weeks to a total of 23 weeks. Both of these instances both of these instances required a change to the labelling of eggs from free range to barn for the short time after the 16-week derogation period. As industry has noted in its response to the consultation, which I'll come to, these changes come at a financial cost. And although the current level risk uh, level for um, avian influenza in poultry is low, and very low for those premises with good biosecurity, it's anticipated that the UK may face outbreaks of the virus in the future. And as such, a longer-term approach to this issue is, pr is the most practical route to take. Members will therefore be aware from the committee papers that the UK Government and the Scottish Government consulted on this jointly, and the results show that the removal of the 16-week limit on the derogation, which will align with what the EU has done, is the preferred route for the industry as well. Over 70% per cent of the respondents to the consultation were in favour of the removal of the limit on the derogation period, and among Scottish respondents only, this figure was even higher at 84%. As well as keeping Scottish industry on a level playing field with the EU, the change that we propose to the regulation today is also likely to keep us in line with the rest of the UK as well. Removing the limit on the derogation period reduces potential cost to businesses that they would otherwise have through having to switch labelling from free range to barn following the end of the 16-week derogation period. 
Eggs produced in different parts of Great Britain are often packed in the same facility, so if the legislation differs across the nations, there could be increased complexity and, con and costs of different labelling requirements at different packing houses, leading to possible disruption in the supply chain. In essence, this is a small proposed change which in practical terms allows the eggs to be labelled as free range for the full duration of the housing orders which are put in place for the health and welfare of laying hens. And the current legislation already allows for this uh, for a substantial period of 16 weeks. The draft instrument also makes a minor terminology update replacing retained EU terminology with assimilated terminology that replaced it under the retained EU Revocation and Reform Act in 2023 and clarifying that the derogation applies to any housing, order make, any housing order made under assimilated law. I hope these remarks are helpful in setting out the rationale for this instrument, and I am happy to take any questions that members may have. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Minister. Um, I've got a question. Um, so the, the Scottish and UK government uh, issued a joint consultation uh, on the removing of the, the derogation. Uh, and, and, and you've commented that 70% 70 70 of all respondents across the UK and 84% in Scotland agreed with the proposals. But that would suggest there's still a significant number of people who didn't agree. Can you give us an idea on, on the general position of those stakeholders who didn't agree with the derogation? Well, the, the vast majority of the respondents of the, of the producers uh, were, were in favour of the derogation. There was a small minority of responses thought that the proposed change could be misleading and confusing to the general public. So in order to mitigate that, the, as published in the consultation notes, if housing measures are introduced for free-range hens, notices will be issued to inform the public and the media of their introduction. And we will also encourage the, the industry and retailers to communicate that to their customers as well. So it was more about a, a mis-selling of, you know, if the, the birds were having to be housed for health issues uh, to protect them from avian influenza, that it could be construed that they weren't actually selling free range. Um, but if we have to go through the changes every time there's an outbreak, then that creates problems for the sector. OK, that neatly takes us on a question from Emma Harper. Thanks, Thanks Convener. Good morning to you, Minister and officials. Um, just a quick uh, Google here. It says the UK consumes around 31 million eggs per day or 350 eggs per second. So that's a lot of eggs. And so I'm interested in what you're describing um, for retailers and customers and the businesses. How, how is the communication going to take place so that they know what the changes are and in terms of the derogation and, and the process? If there is a housing order, then the government will absolutely be putting the message out there that there is a housing order on free range ends because of the threat of um, uh, avian influenza. And I think everybody is now aware that, that we've had a problem over the last number of years um, with uh, outbreaks of avian influenza. I think people understand that. So we would very much be proactive in making sure that people understood that there's a housing order put in place for this um, in, re in relation to free-range eggs. Uh, we would also ask the retailers to make sure that they are doing something to bring their, their consumers up to date with what is happening. Now, we can't force them to do that. Uh, but we can certainly encourage them to make sure that they are being as helpful as they can to allow people to be buying as honestly as they can. Okay. Just, just in practice, so just to understand, because <clears throat> one of the important things about this and, and the reason that 30% of respondents across the UK weren't happy with it was because of the, the idea that free-range eggs might be marketed when actually they've been housed for... A, a lengthy period. So how in practice, if I go into Aldi or Marks and Spencers, other supermarkets are available, but how as a consumer uh, would you suggest that that's going to happen? Because I know you're saying it's, it's voluntary, but at the end of the day, part of the reason there's concerns over this is the public might be misled. And whilst we are very aware of avian flu, I would have thought that the majority of consumers out there are not aware of housing orders or avian flu, and, and they're selecting a product on the basis that they like the idea that uh, hens are not housed and, and they're free-range. Mm -hmm. So how, how will that actually happen in practice in, in a supermarket shelf? Well, the, the housing orders will only be brought in in the event of an outbreak of avian flu. So that, that's the first thing that we need to, to get on, uh, on the record. And there's also already a derogation for 16 weeks. So this practice is already happening. 
Uh, and I take on board the, the, the concerns. It's something I spoke to, to, to Darren about yesterday. How, how do we ensure this? Now, we can't legally force supermarkets to do this. And one of the reasons we can't do that is because if, if we have a housing order here in Scotland, because there's been an outbreak of avian flu somewhere, um, as I said in, in my opening uh, passage, we could have eggs coming up from England that are going to be sold in Scotland because the packing houses work backwards and forwards across each other. So we would then have to have a separate labelling system for Scottish eggs that had been housed and English or Welsh eggs that hadn't been housed, and it becomes very messy. So in terms of what we do for the consumer is we will make it as publicly and widely known as we possibly can that there's a housing order in place and that for a limited period, free-range hens have been told to be housed for health uh, reasons. But as soon as that is free, the guys that are running the free-range hens are going to be opening the doors to let those birds out because they don't want them inside any longer than anybody else does. Um, but it's just a fact of the, the reality that we have avian flu circulating in the country and we are likely to see other outbreaks. So therefore, we want to make it as easy as possible to keep the flow of eggs going backwards and forwards across the UK. Yeah, but, but it, this, this is from the consumer side. It, yeah. it, the regulations, you know, to avoid public confusion around the effects of the regulations, uh, you know, the, the policy note says that uh, the public will be informed and the media of their introduction. So how in practice are you, are you going to do that? Are you going to have a television campaign in Scotland or in areas where, you know, you, what you've said is it, this is not going to be there's a house in order in Dumfries and Galloway will put out a, a media campaign in Dumfries and Galloway. This is potentially the whole of Scotland. So how, how in practice will you as a government inform the public and media of housing orders which are gone, be, gone beyond the 16 weeks that people okay. are aware of? Well, in, in the first instance, if there's a housing order introduced, there is a full public announcement made by the Scottish Chief Veterinary Officer. So that, that would be the first thing that would happen. And that would be in the full public domain. It's communicated in a variety of ways, such as signed declaration added to the ScotGov social media messaging, infographics issued by Scottish Gov comms, and the APHA comms team on both Twitter, X and Facebook. Uh, and emails from the Scottish Government's Disease Control Branch to Scottish stakeholders. Scottish Government would also be looking to issue further notices to inform the public and media about the housing order. In supermarkets, as I said, there is no real legal requirement on retailers to provide a sign saying the, that their free-range eggs are from herns that are currently being housed. Um, but retailers have to be mindful of prohibitions in the Food Safety Act of 1990 regarding the selling or offering for sale food, the presentation of which is likely to mislead as to the nature, substance or quality of the food, and publishing any advertisement likely to mislead as the nature, substance or quality of the food. So they have a requirement to adhere to that. So it would be, I would imagine from a supermarket's point of view, they would be wanting to make sure that they were putting that notice. And I, I distinct, distinctly remember a, a notice in a, a shelf in Tesco's in Perth, when there was a housing order on, saying currently there's a housing order due to avian flu, the free range, these eggs come from free range hens which are currently housed. So Tesco's or Waitrose or whoever it is will be taking their own uh, steps to protect their own reputation. Because if they don't inform their consumers, they could be accused of being uh, misleading the consumer. So we will do everything that we can as far as the government is concerned in terms of informing people. Supermarkets have their own requirements, but they also have their own reputation to protect. So I think this is the, the, the most um, logical way for us to be able to, because we can't say how long a, a housing order will last for. Could be 60 weeks, could be 20 weeks, could be 28 weeks. We don't know until we know how that outbreak has been contained. So this is a, a logical, practical way of trying to get over that, that problem of hitting the 16 week and then everything has to change. Okay, thank you. Rhoda? On this, but um, I suppose it strikes me that some of the folk that might not have been totally happy are the people that already produce barn eggs. So they'll be sitting there saying, We are producing eggs in exactly the same way as those who would have normally produced them as free range, and they're getting a premium on their eggs, whereas all are being produced the same way. Did, were there concerns of that kind? Not that I'm aware of, but. 
if I think that through to its logical conclusion, if I was the guy that was in the free range position, <laughs> I would not be wanting my birds inside for all that period of time. Um, it's going to add cost, it's going to add issues for, for them to deal with. You know, if you're a free range egg producer, you want the doors open, the birds out as often as they possibly can be. So I, I can't honestly give you an answer as to whether or not the, the, the barnet guys were, were concerned about that. But, um, uh, I wouldn't have thought that that would have been where the, the most concern would come from. But I can certainly write back to you if, if there is something that we find that that is an issue. Okay, thank you. Any other? Uh, Tim Eagle. Uh, good morning, Minister. Uh, convene, I'm not sure if I can ask this, but I'm just, just conscious that the public interest on this is, is for the egg part is great, but from the avian flu part, influenza part is quite interesting. Am I allowed to ask, have you got any assessment of what you think this season might bring? Because obviously we're talking about it, but because last season, last winter was not so bad, was it? So I'm just, you know. Yeah, well, my instinct was to say, unfortunately, I don't think we can give you, and that's exactly what Dan's just <laughs> Um, uh, we, we have no certainty of when or how a housing order will, will have to be brought yeah. in, because we don't know when this disease is or would resurface. Okay. You know as well as I do that you know, these things happen, and they can happen quite suddenly. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment, we don't have any indication that this is just to put a safeguard in place yeah. to allow us to have the, the mechanisms to be able to deal with it when it, and if it does. Yeah, I think I get, I get that. I suppose I was just wondering if we're following any tracking across Europe or anything to see that, it, you know, because we, in the past we've seen that coming up um, or down because um, it's in the Arctic Circle now as well. But yeah, but yeah. That, that's, that's fine. I was just conscious that yeah. while we're talking about it, it might be good to, to inform our, the public our, if we think Chief Veterinary Officer is very diligent in all of these things. She's constantly yeah. tracking whatever it is that's happening across all sectors, not okay. just for avian flu. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, we will now uh, turn to agenda item four, which is the formal consideration of the motion to approve the instrument. Uh, and I invite the Minister to speak to and move motion S6M14816. Uh, moved, convener. Thank you. Does any member wish to debate the motion? No. Is the committee content to recommend approval of this instrument? Thank you. We are. And uh, finally, is the committee content to delegate authority to me to sign off a report on the instrument? You are. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister, for attending. That uh, completes the consideration of the instrument. And we'll now move into private session, and I suspend the meeting for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you.